Hi, I'm Alessio and welcome to our guide to Shanghai. You know, for the past few years, Shanghai has been our adopted home. And for Mama Ho Ho, this is where it all started. So when we decided that we were gonna do some more travel content, we thought this was the perfect, the perfect place to start. So without further ado, let's get started in exploring the local and international flavors that combine and make Shanghai the special place that it is. Ready, Jorge? Ready, buddy. Up until the 1800s, Shanghai was little more than a fishing outpost. Today, the city's modern style rivals New York, Paris, and London, while also historically blending cultures in a true East meets West fusion. Now, as the biggest city in the world with its 16 districts and its 24 million residents, we could not possibly cover this entire metropolis in one video and still do it justice. So, instead, we'll be focusing on Puxi, which is the central hub of the city. Puxi is the cultural and entertainment center of Shanghai, consisting of seven districts, Yangpu, Hongko, Putuo, Changning, Shuhui, Jing'an, and Huangpu. Shanghai is the epitome of modern dynamism. Shanghai is the epitome of modern So it's a very interesting city. Very modernized, very international. The pace is very fast. Loud. Shaolongbao. Three or four big mega cities combined together. It's my favorite city in the world because no matter what day of the week it is, something crazy is going to happen to you and you will end up having an adventure. It's exciting, it's multicultural, it's everything you want. You can go out at like three in the morning, there's something happening. It's just layers and layers of so many different things going on. People that do stuff in Shanghai, you have to be larger than life a lot of times. It can feel like the biggest city in the world at points and then the smallest city and little neighborhood that you've ever lived in. Over the past few years, street food has all but disappeared in central Shanghai, a victim of the city's aggressive development. Breakfast can, however, still easily be found from hole in the walls and mom and pop shops across the city. Locals proudly refer to cornerstones of Shanghainese breakfast as the four warriors of Shanghai breakfast, or si da jing gang. These four staples have been effectively fighting off hunger for centuries and consist of da bing, think of a flaky pizza without any toppings, yo tiao, a donut without any sugar, si fang gao, a burrito made of rice, washed down with doujang, homemade soy milk, usually served hot. Mm -mm. But what Shanghai lacks in street food, it more than makes up for in coffee. Coffee consumption in China has nearly tripled in the past four years. And in Shanghai, there are over 6,000 coffee shops spread out across the city. And the quality is good. Like, really good. One street in particular has some of the best in the city. Yongkang Lu previously was the unassuming nightlife capital. That is, until regulations kicked in, forcing the street back into a sleepy neighborhood in the form of French concession. Through all those changes, Café de Volcan has remained. This reliable specialty coffee shop roasts in store and serves as a benchmark in quality for other cafes in the city. Getting around Shanghai isn't as difficult as you'd expect. The subway starts at 3 RB and can reach many corners of the city, with new lines opening up all the time. As if you don't mind the crowds. Like any city, taxis are an option, but communication could be a problem if you don't speak a little Mandarin. By far, the easiest way to get around is by Didi, the ride hailing app. Didi features a full English user interface, and they helped us with this video. Simply switch the language and the settings if you're using the Chinese version. If you're a visitor to China, be it for business or holiday, Didi English version supports both international credit cards and international mobile phone numbers for registration. So everything is set. Shanghai is one of the most tourist-friendly cities in China with many English-speaking hotels and tour guides. No matter if you're a history buff, architect enthusiast, art lover, or you just want to do some shopping and visit Disneyland, there is something for everyone.
Jing'an Temple is Shanghai's oldest temple and is located in the city center. First built in 247 AD, relocated during the Song Dynasty, and renovated again in 1983 after being converted into a plastic factory. Now that's something you know. All right, one of the things you gotta do when you come to Jing'an Temple is try and get a coin into this cauldron, and then you've got some good luck on you. Nope, missed. All right, this time. No. All right, definitely this time. All right, starting to get embarrassed. One of the largest slaughterhouses in the East, 1933 Laoyang Feng, was designed by British architects and built by Chinese developers in, you guessed it, 1933. Boiling. This Gotham Deco building is the last remaining of its design in the world. Today, the building hosts boutique shops, cafes, and offices, a far stretch from its blood-soaked past. 1933 Laoyang Fang is also a favorite spot for local photographers. This place is hugely popular for photo shoots. Almost everywhere you look at people posing, Instagrams being made, which in actual fact brings me to my next point, Alessio. One of the most popular tourist sites in Shanghai is, without fail, Yu Gardens. Hey guys, we're here at the Yu Yuan Gardens, a must see for anyone traveling to Shanghai. Though, hell of a lot of people, I tell you. Built in 1559 for the parents of Ming era governor Pan Yuan Duan, this garden took 18 years to complete, making the Pan family essentially bankrupt. Today, the gardens are surrounded by small streets and lanes where you can find many restaurants, tea houses, and shops. A great place to sample some local snacks and have your eye poked out by a sun umbrella. Fun fact, that bridge that zigzags across the lake is to keep evil spirits at bay, because according to ancient Chinese myth, demons can't turn corners. If you want to tone down the people to space ratio, then perhaps check out Columbia Circle. Originally a country club hangout for Americans in the 20s to 40s, this recent incarnation offers plenty of strolling space as well as offices, cafes and restaurants, and one of the nicest outdoor swimming pools in Shanghai. But swimming is not allowed. Lots of people taking photographs here because that's really all they want you to do with a swimming pool. They just want you to take photographs of it. I mean, look. You take a... Hand here? Yeah. Okay. okay. No, 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 no. Hand up here? Yeah. Too tall. <laughs> okay. 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 Have a nice day. Bye bye. I'm going to go swimming. No. No, I'm not. Had enough rest and ready to get packed into a tight crowd again? Then Tianzifang is for you! A touristic arts and crafts enclave that was developed from a traditional Shikomen residential area. Man, it's busy. Look at all those people. Hey, do yourself a favor and avoid Tianzifang on weekends and holidays, all right? If art and fewer people is more your thing, then you could avoid Tianzifang altogether and head over to M50 Art Space. Tucked away in an old industrial area along Suzhou Creek, this contemporary art district houses a thriving community of more than 100 artists whose studios are open to the public. In Shanghai, you might have heard some people say, if you've not seen the Bund, you haven't seen Shanghai. So here we are, the Bund. Also known as Waitan or Zhongshan Dongyi Lu, the Bund is regarded as the symbol of Shanghai. A mile-long stretch along the Huangpu River, with the west side often referred to as a living museum of the colonial history of the 1800s. Across the river sits Lu Jiaxue, the largest financial district in China, and a monument to the nation's growth. And that's where I'm so far, what do you think? That's great, man, it makes me want to visit, it's nice. It makes you want to visit where? The Bund, I haven't been yet, but uh, you really you, put no, it together, what? it's nice. What? what do you mean you've never been to the Bund? I mean, I haven't been to the Bund yet. That's 
How long have you been in Shanghai? Uh, about a year or so, a, but I haven't... Matthew! Yeah? Adam just said he's never been to the Bund. This is ridiculous. It's not what ridiculous. You mean he's never been to the you Bund. Get mad. He's been here one year. Big... He's never been to the Bund. You've never been to the no, Bund? No, I haven't. Why are you guys making this hold a big on, deal? On. It's a huge deal. You're telling me you've lived here one year and never been to the Bund? No, yes, I am telling you that, and... Are you okay? Yes, I'm you okay. Sure? You got Adam, it is the first thing you do. I gotta say, I agree with that. Maybe the third day is okay, but even a year. Third... You guys are really no. You, you're you're, you're really good right now. The bun. Yeah, wow. It looks like you know the opening scene in Thor. Over there looks like uh, reminds me of London, like the architecture over there. Why have you never come to the bun? I just haven't had time. Because of this, do you see this guy? He's like taking pictures of me. You we are here during the. <laughs> that's what happens. Week that's insane. Holidays, but so no, but like, all right. You said that bun was so important, right? And you see a dude just literally came up to me and took a picture. It's like, oh yeah, you're the buns. You're important too, man. So do you feel bad now that you're here? That you haven't been here. You've lived in Shanghai a year and you've never seen the bun. Do I feel bad? How do you feel? Must be a bit of guilt. I mean, I feel like I would appreciate this a lot more if you guys weren't like being so mean to me. Right? <laughs> Not being mean, but this this is fascinating. Let me soak it in. It's actually really quite. It amazing. is pretty nice. It's pretty. Let's soak it in for a second, right? Yeah. Ready? Go. How about that DD right? It's pretty smooth, right? That was a nice DD. All right, I gotta go finish the edit. Stay here. Yeah, I gotta something else. It's beautiful, and then you see this boat of tires. It's like, why is that there? What is that doing? Like, what are they doing with their lives? Is that tires? What is happening? The food is probably my favorite thing about living in Shanghai um, because it's such an economic center for the entire country. You get food from all over the country, really super authentic, great food um, from Xinjiang in the far northwest province, up north, and then of course the local Shanghai food, um, and also international food from all over. This is Jamie, co-founder of Untour Food Tours. We founded Untour in 2010 um, with the mission to help foreigners uh, who are visiting Shanghai or who live here to discover delicious food that they wouldn't be able to find on their own. To get this food section started, Matt met up with Jamie at her favorite noodle shop. So, wow, it's popular. Yeah. So this is Wei Sheng Jai, um, one of Shanghai's most popular local uh, noodle restaurants. It's been around for well over 30 years. Their specialty is ma jang mian, which is a peanut sesame sauce. Why do we sit there with that silver cabinet? Hey, hey, we can do it. This way. This way, Okay. All right. In order to get your noodles, you need to take the receipt, and then you're in table 10. Right. So they'll bring you your noodles. You have to hand this off to an IA to bring to you. Okay. Whoa. Okay, no, I'm busy. <laughs> soon as you can mm -hmm. is mix it because okay. otherwise the sauce will start to stick together. Right, I'm on it. So these are served in 150 gram portions. You can double your noodles and double your sauce. I want that just a, a splash a little bit more vinegar in there mm -hmm. though. So simple. Mm-hmm. So I once brought a friend here. Um, ordered one, he ate it in about, inhaled it, really, in about <laughs> 30 seconds and asked if I could order another one. And I said, sure, ordered another one, inhaled it again, and I had to leave. I was like, all right, you're good. There's a park down there, go walk around. And about 30 minutes later, I get a text message from him saying, how do you order it? And he went back and got another bowl. We are a hundred years old. First time in Shanghai, the very first thing you have to do is eat Xiaolong Bao. 
Shanghai's most famous dish. Xiaolongbao is a soup dumpling uh, that originated right outside the city in Nanshan. So you can't actually go to Nanshan and try the originals, but they honestly have been improved upon. So I would recommend going to Linlongfang, which is an offshoot of Jia Jia Tongbao. Um, it's the sister restaurant, but not as touristy. And while you're there, you can try hairy crab Xiaolongbao. So a full 100% hairy crab, which is a delicacy in the region best in season in the autumn, um, but get the full-on hairy crab Xiaolongbao for a real taste of what Shanghai is like. Shanghai's vast culinary choices means that you can go from a traditional Xiaolongbao one minute to an authentic Cuban sandwich the next. Or treat your sweet tooth to some of the best gelato in the city at Dao Kuori. I started this gelato shop with my partner Lisa. We wanted to create a real and authentic gelato shop. And our most popular flavor here is pineapple citron pepper. There you go. Mmm, <laughs> mm, that's good. A contender for best burger in China could easily be won by chef and restaurateur Austin Hu. Known for his impeccable comfort food, Austin is a legend around town and his laid back diners are a hit with the locals. This is a modern play on the classic diner. The diner burger, the, the smash burgers, I think that is kind of the predecessor to fast food burgers and the way that fast food burgers ideally now should be still moving towards, you know, which many companies still are continuing to do. Best burger in Shanghai. Yeah. Mm. Citron salad chili crisp. I mean, I think fusion's a, you know, it's a dangerous term in modern culinary world, right? No one likes the term fusion. But the way I grew up in my background, I think it's just, you only ultimately cook who you are. So I am neither really American, nor really Chinese, nor Japanese. The food I like to eat, uh, historically and currently, comes from all these places. So like, it's natural to cook in that direction. I don't have anything to adhere to. There's nothing is sacred to me in the best possible way. So we're walking into Fuxing Park. This right. is one of the bigger parks in the Puxi side, the western side of the river. Okay. Um, and it's really fun in the morning because if you come here, you've got people doing water calligraphy, you've got people doing patriotic songs and choruses, um, lots of dancing. Sometimes they'll dance with like ribbons or swords, um, and then of course Tai Chi and that sort of stuff. The lifespan in Shanghai is the fifth longest in Asia, and of course Asia is the longest in the world. And that's a lot to do with the fact that um, the elderly people are out moving around every morning, doing their dances, doing their Tai Chi, and also have this really nice social aspect. So what do you think, in your opinion, makes Shanghai so unique in comparison to other places in China or even Asia? I think it's the international quality of Shanghai. I mean, historically, it's been one of the most open cities, and so it has this very cosmopolitan feel. The New York of, of China, where people come to make all their dreams come true. Huh, what's this guy doing over here? It's just an, an average Thursday in Shanghai. <laughs> at the park. <laughs> if shopping is your thing, Shanghai has you more than covered. But if it's souvenirs you're after, there's one place you have to check out. First created in the 1920s and then revived again in 2005, Feiyue is a Shanghai institution. Uh 
它是一个蓝色和红色的 logo。嗯，这个第一次。呃，对，这这是最有名的，最早的。基本上所有穿飞跃的人。This is what everyone remembers for you. Being these are the classic pair. This is what you want to get. And they have foreigner sizes too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is how much? This is eight hundred and eighty-eight. Eight hundred and eighty-eight. You want to buy? No, no. So they haven't sold the pair of these yet. Two hundred and eighty-eight. Come on, done. <laughs> <then. laughs> You may have seen our past video trying to get a DD where the driver constantly calls you in Mandarin, completely bypassing the English app. 你在哪个路口？你自己不知道吗？你在哪个路口？我怎么知道你在哪个路口？你自己不知道吗？ Well, Didi also saw that video and reached out to us for further feedback, and now we're happy to report the English app has been further improved. Drivers are notified when their passenger is using the English app and that they may not speak Mandarin. Instead, drivers are recommended to use the auto-translated instant messaging function instead, allowing the passenger and driver to interact with ease. But still, you should try and say something to the driver because it's a really great way to practice. 我给你一个好评啊，谢谢。Shanghai's liveliness goes well beyond daylight, and no matter what time it is, there's always something to do. But first, let's eat again. Two places that represent Shanghai well are the legendarily local Jesse and exclusive Korean-Japanese fusion joint Jeju Izakaya. You know, if you've never been, or if you really want and are curious about the real taste of Shanghai, there's a restaurant called uh, Jesse or Lao Ji Si on Tianping Lu in the French Possession. I've been going there in and on and off for. Over 10 years now, and I think they do the best job of not quite home style food, like one step above home style food, but of producing flavors and dishes that are a reliably delicious, but even more important, are representative of the area. Classic Shanghai, the Hong Sao Ro is epic there. Tong Yuan Ban Mian, the scallion noodles, epic. It's a very small, very humble restaurant. Uh, you do have to book in advance. There's certain dishes you must order in advance. On the other side of the culinary coin is Jeju Izakaya. A Japanese-style Korean restaurant that you can only get a table for through WeChat. 어 안녕하십니까. 어 저는 류태혁이고 제주 이자카야에서 셰프를 맡고 있습니다. 어 제주 이자카야에서 제주 means it's a Jeju island. So Izakaya is a Japanese-style restaurant. So it's a we'll make a Jeju-style Izakaya restaurant. <laughs> So it's an open kitchen. It's a make a friend and just together doing. This is our concept. Jeju Izakaya has a three-month waiting list, and reservations are made through a strict process that involves adding the restaurant on WeChat and waiting to request a seat for the next available month. Example is a September reservation is August first. Start. So many people uh, send message, but this uh, nowadays is a so very difficult reservation and so many message. I'm a big fan of the old octopus. As you're about to see, Shanghai is a city with the most colorful nightlife in China. However, getting around can be tricky as the subway lines uh, close at 10:30. <laughs> but no matter where you are, you'll be able to get a DD. And you'll be bar hopping from Bar Rouge to Beer IE before you know it. They also intermittently partner with venues and events, suggesting sites and destinations for you directly in the app. So, look out for that. No stranger to Shanghai's nightlife, Logan Brous is one of the big personalities in the city scene. My name is Logan Brous. I'm a partner here at Tacalicious. I'm the owner of Logan's Punch. I moved to Shanghai May 15, 2010. Putting his skills to the test, Logan accepted the challenge to come up with a cocktail for us using only convenience store ingredients. I was the first white American bartender in Shanghai, and so nobody would ever order drinks for me because they were too nervous. And there was no white customers anyway. So we have our vessel. Yeah. Let's do a wasabi flavored chip rim. Really? Yeah, we'll get real with it, right? Is it soju? Yeah, this is soju. We're gonna hit a little baijiu for our strength. I thought I thought you can't mix baijiu. Ah, uh, just about how you use it. You know, I think a lot of stuff. It's just in in terms of uh, preparation and measurements. Sure. I like everything about baijiu. It makes the cigarettes taste better. Did you choose this one? Yeah, purposely? this is my favorite baijiu. We have grapefruit. We have baijiu. What? We'll go with that so we can bring out that. Oh, perfect. Boom. There's also make, this is grapefruit, so it's gonna bring out this grapefruit. But the baijiu is gonna cut it, and we're gonna get a little citrus. We have a party. Bags of ice. We'll, play with we'll try with something with it, right? right? China's a really big place, and I think people don't realize this is a mixing pot city. I like drinking on the streets. <laughs> no open container laws is no problem, I love that. I like that nobody drives, so when you have a bar, 
you don't have to worry about people getting drunk driving home. It's a big thing in the States. Okay, what I need you to do, my friend, is crush this chips up. So I'm gonna rim this glass and we're gonna do a rim. Okay. Now, I know those of you watching at home are saying, how did you do this? And make it look so easy. For late nights and loud music, Logan's Punch is a great intro to the Shanghai bar scene. Think of uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but for people that actually have jobs. We do punches, which is a big sharing cocktail. We try to artistically express our degeneracy. If you want to be a great bartender, you have to be able to smile and have personality. Right. Anybody can learn how to make a drink. Right. It's how you handle the pressure that makes it a little bit more difficult. Next thing we want to do, top it up with some of this Perrier. And my friends, we have a cocktail. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Salute. It's actually really drinkable. Yeah, that's good. I like the grapefruit obviously comes out. The baijo is really light. I'm gonna tell the truth, I think it needs a little more baijo. People are pretty mellow. I mean, we just walked into a family mart with a bartending toolkit, but they're like, oh cool, what's happening? I wanna see this. People wanna learn. And that's what I think is really cool. Like it's a welcoming attitude and atmosphere. Grapefruit soju, oh, grapefruit Perrier, the best baijo. Sour plums with wasabi chips. I'm pretty buzzed. Partially buzzed, we took our sweet mama hoo hoos across the street to Taco Licious. Taco Licious is the brainchild behind my chef, Dice back there, who's the best, and myself and two of our other friends. So we wanted to do something like a playful juxtaposition of what a taco is and what a taco can be in Shanghai. It's actually a perfect Shanghai metaphor. So we do like a mapo tofu taco, we do a twice cooked Sichuan pork taco. So we do these things that are Chinese mainstays, but we do them in a different format, which is kind of fun. I don't know if adjectives, but that's really, really, really good. <laughs> one of the latest nightlife hubs in the city is Found 158, also known as... Welcome to Lao Wai Park. Found 158 is home to China's first ever magic bar, Blackstone. This is probably my favorite bar in Shanghai. A typical night here is just a couple friends, really relaxed, nice drinks, and just uh, screaming your lungs out because you don't understand how a magic trick works. Wow, that guy was handsome. Imagine the words in front of us, spelling her name right here, and think of any one of those letters. I see an R, yes? And after the R, there are two digits that are exactly the same. Perina? Yeah. Thank you very much. What? 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 When Before leaving Found 158, be sure to grab a slice of the best pizza in China at Home Slice. One of our favorites being the Austin Hu collaboration, Kung Pao Chicken Pizza. Speak Low is a Japanese Ran speakeasy voted best bar in mainland China three years in a row. There's a secret entrance that you have to find yourself. I'm not going to show you how you get in. This is the entrance tunnel. The bar is back that way. It's so good. Let's go check it out. We have um, different floors, so people can enjoy the different layers. The second floor is a basic concept of American speakeasy. Welcome. The third floor is more cozier than the second floor. As our name, Spiklo, is my favorite drink. So the ingredients is using the matcha and two kinds of the rum, which is uh, white rum and dark rum. Also the Pedro Jimenez, which is a sherry. This tea bowl is actually used for the tea ceremony to serve to the customer. So this is a one of the omotenashi style. And put the matcha powder and mix together and mix well and we strain it and put it inside of the shaker. So here's the speak low. We spray around the glasses and give the contrast of the flavors. This is 
my favorite bar in China. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. When I make cocktail, there's um, like many audience in front of me. Yeah. When they see my action to make cocktail, they always be smiling. Yeah. When I see that smiling, oh, nice. It ah. gives me happiness. <laughs> Natural performer, I like it. Yeah. Cheers, man. Cheers. A traditional night out in China would feel empty without a trip to your local KTV. Oh, this is fancy. Mm. Chill, it's like mood mood. lighting. No, it's always fun. Everyone pretends like it's not a good time, but it really is. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a good bonding experience for sure. It's a good way to just like, if you're a bad singer, you can still go and scream a song and no one cares. You can have dinner made, they'll make you dinner. You can go to the convenience. It's basically like going to a 7-Eleven and you just pick it up and then they take it to your room. You don't even have to carry it yourself. And also uh, flat chicken. Those two things will get you through a good KTV session. Yeah, I gotta agree with them on that, but that's it's fish. fish. KTV is China's word for karaoke, and like Japan, it's the country's most popular form of nightlife. Despite how karaoke works in the West, KTV in China is more of a private affair, with individual rooms for you and your... Oh, hold on a second, this is my jam. The remix to ignition, I'm gonna fresh out the kitchen, mama rolling that body, got every man in here wishing. So once again, guys, that was a good solid five hours KTV there, guys. Oh, man. Nice. That's amazing. I'm exhausted. My voice has been on. I, I, I think I was asleep. I think we came this way, guys. KTV not quite your speed, then how about... Go Cars! Cars! I've never done this before. What? what? Really? You serious? Yeah, but come on, let's go. Nice. Feeling pretty pumped. I'm definitely going to be Andy. I'll tell you that right now. I'm ready. I don't like to go I've fast though. Done. All right, here we go. This is how I die. Yeah, bitches. think of Shanghai, they may picture glitz and glamour, with some even accusing it of not being the real China. But one great thing about Shanghai is the abundance of choice. Shanghai has options to fit any lifestyle. You can always go cheaper or blow your salary at a Michelin star restaurant. You can even live in Pudong if you have to. The choice is up to you. <laughs>